Hello everyone, welcome to iExampi. In continuation of our series on professional knowledge discussion for Bank of India Credit Officer, today we are going to discuss an important topic of ratio analysis. This is a very important topic for a credit officer because he should be able to analyze the financial statements and performance of a company of a borrower so that he can understand the credit worthiness of the borrower. What exactly is ratio analysis? It is a quantitative analysis because we are looking at numbers which help us to understand uh, the financial performance and the financial position of a particular company. How well is the company doing? Is it profitable? Is it efficient? And how does it, uh, uh, you know, stand on a financial status in terms of its solvency and its long-term existence. So the core key broad parameters in which the uh, the four key main areas in ratios are calculated is profitability, efficiency or also known as the turnover, uh, the solvency uh, of the company and fourth is the liquidity. When we are specifically talking about banks, the banks generally also focus more on sub parts of the solvency ratio, which are related to the coverage and debt servicing ratios of the company. So these are sub parts of solvency, however, very, very important for a uh, bank perspective. So the key ratios for any credit officer there are many many ratios but the most important ones are what i am going to discuss so in the liquidity ratios what uh, we are analyzing is the ability to meet the short term liabilities of a company and this can be assessed with the help of two ratios current ratio which is your current assets by current liabilities or the quick ratio which is your current assets minus your inventory divided by your current liabilities. So basically this uh, this further sees even the more quicker ratios current assets which can be easily converted into cash to meet the short term liquidity. The second category of uh, ratios is the turnover ratios which are basically uh, assessing the efficiency efficiency of the company in utilizing its various kinds of assets whether it is the total assets as fixed assets working capital assets or current assets so how effectively is the company uh, using them and this is assessed by uh, with the help of the inventory turnover again i am not discussing all of them but the key important ones inventory turnover is your um, COGS cost of goods sold by your average inventory. Next is your receivables turnover, which is your credit sales divided by your average uh, receivables. Another important one is your operating cycle. So you convert the inventory or receivables into number of days which is simply dividing your days in a year which would be 365 or 360 sometimes taken for the ease of calculation divided by the receivables turnover or the inventory turnover respectively to get the number of days for which your uh, uh, current assets are tied up so when you add the inventory days and your receivable days and subtract from them the payable days is when you get the operating cycle that means the time taken to convert from your inventory to cash another one more important ratio you can look at is the working capital turnover which is your sales divided by your average working capital Next category important is the profitability ratios that is the earning capacity of the company which is assessed through your net profit ratio which is your net profit divided by your sales operating ratio this is actually the OPEX ratio and not the operating profit so if it is operating profit then we calculate the profit if it is only operating ratio then it is the opex by sales that is operating expenses by sales then your return on as uh, return on assets so how much is the company earning on its total assets so basically your net profit 
divided by your average total assets and last return on capital employed so instead of just looking at equity or assets we are looking at the total capital that is employed by the company this is calculated as EBIT divided by your capital employed which is a combination of all the capital that has been employed whether borrowed or owned so debt or equity so these are some key ones there are many more profitability ratios solvency ratio is basically looking at the long-term existence of the company and its ability to be able to repay back and service the debt which the company is looking to take so one important ratio uh, solvency ratio is uh, which the banks use is your total outside liability by tangible net worth so uh, another important way or uh, you know more common way to uh, in books that we see is called as the debt equity ratio uh, in banks however they use the terminology total outside liabilities which includes both your long term and your short term debt any kind of liability which is interest bearing divided by your equity or shareholder equity which is also known as the net worth so tangible net worth means if the company has any intangible assets we will reduce those uh, another important ratio is the interest coverage to see the ability of the company to be able to service its interest on a regular basis this is calculated as EBIT by interest cost and DSER debt service coverage ratio which is seeing the ability of the company to be able to service not just the interest but also the loan repayment amounts in a year many times uh, in EBIT we also reduce the effect of the tax in that case EBIT by 1 minus T your tax rate is taken instead of pure EBIT so depending on the information available in the question you can either use EBIT or EBIT adjusted for tax let's look at some MCQs let's practice some questions for the exam purpose first question if a creditor would be happy if there is a decrease in which of the following ratios whether well, the, the debt to total ratio, uh, assets ratio return on equity return on assets interest coverage or debtor turnover so in this case you will see that debt to total assets is a solvency ratio these are profitability ratios this is also a solvency ratio however it is judging the uh, ability of the company to pay its interest out of the profits which is calculated as EBIT by interest so higher the EBIT the better it is for the creditor and debt to debtor turnover also shows the efficiency in collecting the cash from the debtor so higher the debtor turnover the better so the ratio which the creditor would be happy if decreases is your debt to total assets because it shows less leverage being used by the uh, company and therefore more ability to use leverage to grow the business and service your debt second question assuming no change in other variables which of the following would decrease your return on assets so what is my return on assets my return on assets is given by net profit divided by my total Assets. So when we have got such questions, always try to write down the formula to understand what the impact will be. Now we are saying that what will decrease uh, my return on assets, right? So my return on assets given the formula mathematically can decrease either when my numerator is going down or my denominator is increasing. So let's see from here. A decrease in tax rate would actually increase my net profit. So my numerator will actually increase. So this cannot be the option. Second, it a decrease in my interest expense. Again, this will lead to an increase in my profitability. Again, so this will be not possible. An increase in the average assets. So yes, my average assets, which is in the denominator, if that is increasing, yes, there is a possibility that my return on assets will decrease. And final question, uh, point, and an increase in net income so my if my net income or my net profit increases then my return on assets will actually increase or none of the above so we do have an option so none of the above is also
cancel. So basically my answer is an increase in the average assets will decrease my return on assets. If you are still buying a mock test for various exams, uh, let me remind you at IEXAM B you get all mock tests for free. So you do not need to buy mock tests for practice. You can visit our website and go to the section of free mock test where you will find free mock tests for not just Bank of India, but for various, various more uh, exams, almost 100 plus uh, exams, uh, mock tests you will find. Uh, uh, for 100 more exams here for practice for free. Let's move on to the next question. A company's quick ratio is 1.2. If the inventory is purchased for cash, which of the following is likely to happen? The numerator would decrease and uh, more than the denominator resulting in a lower quick ratio. The denominator would decrease more than the numerator resulting in a higher current ratio numerator and denominator would change proportionally which will leave the current ratio unchanged and or the numerator would increase more than the denominator resulting in a higher quick ratio so which of this is possible so let's look at how it will be done say quick ratio we know is calculated as your current assets minus your inventory divided by your current liabilities now by this transaction and happening which is inventory is being purchased for cash my inventory has gone up and my cash has decreased because i have to pay cash does this affect any of this uh, in this formula okay so my inventory goes up however i'm subtracting it therefore my inventory effect will going up will not have an impact but my current assets reducing my cash cash is a part of my current assets so a reduction in my cash will actually reduce my current assets so my current assets will decrease my current liabilities remain the same therefore my quick ratio will decrease this therefore lower quick ratio because of my numerator falling more than my denominator is the correct answer here a fourth question is a numerical let's solve for one of the very important numericals as the inventory turnover so we have been given certain information and we have to calculate the inventory turnover so inventory turnover is calculated as cogs cost of goods sold by average inventory I already know what my average inventory is I need to calculate my cogs we also know that sales minus cogs cost of goods sold gives me my gross profit in which case my cogs is basically uh, the difference between my sales and gross profit so if my gross profit is 20 percent my cogs will actually be 80 percent of my sales okay so in this case it turns out to be 16 lakh right 20,000 into 80 percent will give me 16 lakh and therefore now I can calculate my inventory turnover as 16 lakh divided by my average inventory which is 4 lakh so my answer is 4 times uh, at I exam B, you will find a course uh, very curated crisp uh, content provided in forms of short videos of 15 minutes short crisp notes relevant for the exam uh, the information that is required has been provided and you don't have to read bulky uh, books or bulky notes and a lot of practice tests to uh, give you the practice of exam type questions. Uh, you, we also hold live sessions for discussion and que query resolutions which help in your preparation at a much faster speed. At a 50% faster rate you will be able to prepare for your upcoming exam. Next question. ABC Inc. income statement shows a sale of rupees 20,000, COGS of 8,000, pre-interest expenses, operating expenses of 6,000 and interest expense of 2,000. What will be my interest coverage ratio? So my interest coverage ratio is given as EBIT divided by my interest expense. Okay, And my EBIT can be calculated as my sales minus COGS minus my operating expenses right 
I will not subtract my interest because I am finding my interest coverage here. So therefore, I get 20,000 minus 8,000 minus 6,000 divided by 2,000 resulting in 6,000 by 2,000 giving me 3 times. So uh, basically the company is earning 3 times its expenses, interest expenses and therefore is in a good position to be able to service its interest on a, a regular basis. Next question, what is the total outside liability uh, by tangible net worth of the company from the given information. So uh, as we were discussing when we were discussing the ratios, my total outside liabilities consist of my total debt, which will be both long term or short term. Basically any liability which is interest bearing is taken as my total outside liability. So both my long term debt and my overdraft because I have to pay interest on this, this becomes my total outside liability of 20 lakh. Now my tangible net worth, what is my tangible net worth? It is the equity that the, I have which will include my share capital plus all the reserves and surplus that I have. Now share capital, which share capital? Is it issued or authorized? Then we are looking at the issued capital. Why? Because authorized capital is the maximum capital that a company can uh, raise uh, as such as allowed by its MOA, Memorandum of Association. And issued capital is the actual money that the company has been able to raise or bring in the company. Therefore, we are looking at the issued capital, which is your 10 lakh plus my reserves and surplus of 20 lakh. So my tangible net worth is 30 lakh. Now that I know both my uh, 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 amounts of total outside liabilities and my tangible net worth, it is very easy cal to calculate the TOL by TNW as 20 by 30 lakh, which will give me 0 0.667. So my correct answer is here B. So uh, this was the discussion for today's session. I hope you have been able to revise, learn, understand and practice some very important questions. As of now, you can avail a flat 40% off on your Bank of India Credit Officer course uh, if you avail and you can use the coupon code BOI40. We are conducting live sessions to cover the syllabus uh, uh, which is apt, which is important and which is required for your understanding. Uh, halfway through we have already done. Today we have the class on credit risk and its measurement and uh, we will continue to have classes till the exam date. The expert guidance you get for all the three subjects, your professional knowledge, English language and general awareness from experienced uh, faculty who have actually worked in the banking space in the various regulatory bodies and have uh, experience of preparing thousands of students for various competitive exams in the government space. So wishing you all the best. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to so get the latest updates related to the next sessions.